Hey, my name's Steve Sims, and I make shit happen. You want to find out more about me, then catch me on this week's Jesse T Show. <laughs> Who am I? Well, I'm a, a father of three, biker, and drinks too much whiskey. Uh, what do I do? I get to mingle around with billionaires and people that own things like countries. Um, for 20 plus years, I was the founder of the world's first and largest experiential concierge firm. And now I teach, train, and coach people how to go for stupid. I friggin' love it. I love it. And, and <laughs> where did this knack for going for stupid come from? Ignorance. Um, as, a, as, a, as a lad growing up in the 80s and the 90s, I didn't have the privilege of Instagram to tell me how inadequate my life was. So I just went out to try different things. And I realized that I didn't like being poor because I was, I had no money. And I would look at people in new cars and being able to eat in fine restaurants. And I was like, why can't I do that? So I went on a journey to try and find out what these people did, thought, looked at, viewed each other, how they handled it. I wanted to find out because I was convinced it was a mindset because, hey, I'm from East London. I can hustle better than the next person. <laughs> so what did these people have that I didn't? And I felt it was mindset. So I went out to try and find out what it was, created this concierge firm, quite simply to act as a Trojan horse. I would bring you something you wanted, but basically I was slipping into the conversation. That was the whole point. I wanted to give you a reason to allow me to be in the room to ask you questions like, so how did you start this company and why is that a problem and why is that not? And how do you view wealth and how do you, you view success? So I literally invented a company as a Trojan horse to allow me to have conversations with quite simply the most powerful people in the world. It's the law of reciprocity, brother. You do for someone, they do for you kind of thing. And it, it, could, yep. be, it could be karma. You know, you, you just do enough nice shit in the world, enough cool stuff in the world, that stuff's going to happen for you. And, you know, a little bit, of, little bit of synergy. You know, I grew up in Boston, poor as well. But I had that hustle. I had that ask a ton of questions, get in the room and do whatever it took to kind of get there. And so um, where was that instilled in you? Was it just a, a method of survival where you're like, shit, this is what I got to do? Or did you have someone in front of you as a kid that kind of led the way for those types of behaviors? Oh, God, no. I certainly had no one around me. In fact, probably the fact that I had the lack of people around me made me yearn for something. You know, if you're in a dark room, you yearn for sunshine kind of thing. Yep. Um, I would be in rooms where everyone would be settling about how poor they are or, you know, the money they've got or how many beers they can have or the job they've got. They would moan about it, but do nothing about it. And the funny thing about entrepreneurs is I reckon, and I, I, I beg someone not to try this, <laughs> but if you've got 10 entrepreneurs lined up next to each other, we're all vastly different but there's always a gene that connects us. Yeah. And I reckon if you sliced us all in half, there's like a, a purple blood cell that runs through our veins or something. <laughs> because you can go to any decent entrepreneurial event and you will meet people of all ages, all, all demographics, all financial changes. But we can all sit at a table and connect. Yes. Because there's something about entrepreneurs that we're aggravated and we're pissed off until we solve it. So I think as I grew up, and of course, like I'm, I'm 250 pound of ugly fella. So me being aggravated and riding around on a motorcycle from East London was not a great cocktail for success. But my aggravation wasn't there to hurt someone. My aggravation was at how everyone else is happy to settle. And that made no sense to me. You know, why are you happy to, oh, I can only have a couple of beers tonight? Well, why? Well, I haven't got the money. Well, okay, there's a reason. What can you do about that reason to make sure that there's no longer a reason? You know, and, but they didn't. And they would moan about that job and you'd go, well, why don't you quit? Nah. And the worst statement in the planet, oh, better the devil you know. <laughs> That's bullshit. And as entrepreneurs, we jump out of the frying pan into the volcano. Yes. We just go. Now, as far as I'm concerned, as an entrepreneur, fear propels us because there's nothing more scary than not taking that chance, not making that phone call, not trying. And any entrepreneur knows you get broke, sued, ripped off, laughed at, ridiculed, 
And if you haven't had those things, hey, you're not an entrepreneur yet. <laughs> but as an entrepreneur, we get those almost on a weekly basis. And I'm going to name drop. Um, I worked with Elon Musk for a while. And I remember one of the statements he made. He said, look, they'll always laugh at you just before they applaud. It's weird. It's, it's weird. But it's, it is. You're so right. I remember when, because again, for about 25 plus years, I only worked with billionaires. And now I work with entrepreneurs to help them become billionaires. But for all of that time, very, very few people knew who I was. I could be in a room and I've been in rooms where the guys owned the city that we're in. And people have literally come up to me thinking I'm security and they've handed me their car keys <laughs> to go and get that car. And I'm the guy that is working for the big guy, you know? And so it's very fun. And I was always happy being the unknown guy. In fact, I egotistically used to say I was the most connected in the planet, uh, connected guy on the planet that nobody knew. Right. And I was very happy with that. <laughs> when my book came out, it kind of changed it. And all of a sudden I got haters and I got naysayers and I got jeers. I got people publicly sending me emails and letters going, how can you sleep at night? You do all of these things for all of these rich, powerful people. How do you feel? I feel fine, thank you very much. <laughs> but I realized that getting those jeers and those haters and those laughs mean that you must be doing the same right. Yep. To be getting that hatred aimed at you, all right, something must be clicking. Thank you very much for that confirmation.